you were looking at a big box of slides from somebody's life. My wife went to an estate sale earlier in the year in the area and bought a big box of these slides along with reels of tape and a tape recorder. And I did a video on the tape recorder earlier in the year you can check out. But today I'm going to take a look at some of these slides. We're going to look at some of the old boxes they came in, ways you could look at slides other than a slide projector. And of course, now with the digital age upon us, you can actually uh, digitize these slides into um, digital files. And we'll uh, go through a little bit of that. We'll even show you some of these pictures from way back in the 50s and 60s. So stick around. We'll have a slideshow for you in just a bit. Once you start taking slides, you really can't stop. There's lots and lots of them to look at, lots of different boxes they came in from different companies and processors. Let's begin by looking at some of these boxes. These uh, slides that were taken span a, a period of about three decades. And it's interesting to look at some of the packaging that was used over the, the years and decades for, uh, for color slides. This is one from back in the 50s. 1956 to be exact. It was a square box, something that uh, I didn't see after the 50s, at least from this collection. These are mounted color transparencies using Kodachrome film from Kodak, of course, the leader in this sort of thing back in the day. It had a plastic box, and on the bottom, I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, I'll see if I can get it in focus a little bit here, obviously. Here we go. Coda slide box from Eastman Kodak Company. But it had space for quite a few slides, probably about 18 to 20 slides all together that fit in this little square box. Here's another one from 1953. This is actually a mailer. Uh, on the back is the name and address of the person who received the slides, and I won't show this just for privacy purposes, but uh, it came in a box like this. It has the name and address on the back. It costs six cents to send this to New York City to get processed. And inside were the slides. And I'll get the slides out of here just for a second to show you the advertising on the inside of the box. Interesting stuff. It sold you a uh, projector and a table viewer. And it also mentioned that you could get big coat of color prints from your color slides. Uh, in fact, that was a, an ongoing thing. They were always trying to uh, upsell you, basically, as far as uh, turning your slides into prints and so forth. Here's another box from the 1960s with color transparencies. Nationwide processing, in fact. That was a big deal back then, nationwide. Another box from the 60s with Kodachrome slides. This was more generic, and it depended, of course, on where you took your slides. If you took it into a drugstore, you might get a, a generic box like this back. Later in the 70s, 3M began to get into the business of processing color slides. And on the back, Another uh, plug for getting uh, enlargements from slides, duplicate slides, color prints from your slides. Another generic box. And uh, this is another generic box of color slides. This one is like inside a little sleeve here. And then you open this up. And uh, so these were, these were interesting how they kept these slides very well protected. Now inside this one, is some tissue paper type stuff to protect the slides, but I'm doing this because there's information about this, a lot of information about your color film, uh, what happens if something's wrong, uh, if your prints are coming out totally black or light or dark, heavy shadows, red or yellow streaks, things like this. It would explain what you're doing wrong as far as problems with, with the slides in terms of uh, 
exposure and so forth. Unlike photographs, you can't just look at slides. You've got to use special equipment to view them, and it became a bit of an investment. Let's take a look at some of the equipment people used to use back in the day to look at their slides. Besides having a slide projector, many people also bought one of these little devices. It's a slide viewer. This is made by Sears. And it was pretty simple, made of plastic. It has a little slot on the top to put the slide in. This looks like it might have been an AC adapter of some sort for the power. Otherwise, if you take the thing apart, you'll see that there's room for a couple of uh, C batteries. On the middle part, that's where the light bulb is. Let's see if I can get a little better focus for you on that. Very small little light bulb right there. So, you just take your slide, put it in the slot, press down, and voila, you've got your picture. Now to look at more than one slot at a time, you could always use something like this. This is the uh, Apollo Glow Pro portable light box. And it is literally a metal box with a plastic uh, opaque cover on top. And uh, there's a light bulb, a fluorescent light bulb inside that basically uh, illuminates the uh, opaque uh, plastic surface looks like this pretty easy to use you just plug it in then hold down this switch for it says up to 15 seconds while the bulb starts going if you let go sometimes it goes on right away sometimes it takes a little longer so we'll see what happens if I do it right now there we go and it's a nice uh, solid white source of light. You can take, pardon my reach, you can take all your slides now, put them down like this, look at them, compare, contrast, makes it very easy to uh, see all the different slides. And like I mentioned, it was it's just a metal box around the edges with a plastic cover on it that can slide off so you can access the light bulb which is your basic uh, fluorescent light bulb that's kind of a curved feels like a plastic insert there with a curve on it so it reflects the light evenly but uh, that comes in handy for looking at multiple slides and picking out the ones you want to well for example put in your slide projector Once you get a bunch of slides, the uh, only logical thing next to do is to buy a slide projector. And this is an example of one that was available back in the 70s or 60s, I believe, one of the two decades uh, they began to sell this. This is the Kodak Carousel 700 slide projector. There were a ton of different brands and, uh, of course, different models by this particular company, Kodak. Uh, I'm sure this sold a lot because it's got a very famous name. Uh, the same film you used to take the slides uh, sold the projector to show the slides, so a lot of people opted to buy Kodaks. Now this particular slide projector does not work. Uh, the advanced feature on the carousel doesn't work. 
the bulb burned out, and the remote control doesn't work. So it's a three for three blowout in terms of actually using this. But I will show you uh, around the machine and we'll turn it on and see what actually, I don't know, what does work, I guess, to a certain extent. Starting off in the front of the machine, you've got a focus knob to allow you to focus the projection from uh, the projector to the screen. And there is a little knob here that also lets you elevate the front of the machine to adjust to where your screen is as far as its position is concerned. The back of the machine you've got the fan motor, you've got uh, the outlet which unplugs by the way, and you've got a few other sets of outlets for remote controls. Off, fan, low and high. Low and high refer to the lamp uh, a brightness. Here's a closer look at the actual carousel itself. As you'll notice, zero has a little notch in it. That's where you can position it on the slide machine. To start at the beginning of your carousel, you put slides in each slot. And as you can see, each carousel holds 80 slides. Here's how you put the carousel on the slide machine itself. You position it on top and put the notch where the zero is in this little notch here. Push down, and when you turn the machine on, you can now push this select button down and spin the slide carousel to any position you want. Zero is where you can remove the actual carousel. Now I'm going to load some slides in the carousel by simply dropping them in. Normally you would have to make sure that the slide is right side up and is flipped the proper direction this, this way as opposed to that way so it doesn't show up being reversed. And obviously a lot of people wouldn't get it right all the time and that would be the funny part of the slideshow when you see an upside down slide give her a good good laugh and things like that. This is the cover that holds the slides in. That locks into place. Now normally I'd be able to use a remote control and just hit these things automatically, but unfortunately that's not the case. So what I'm just going to do is just do this and move the slide projector carousel manually. And as you can see it goes, is supposed to go from position to position, but whatever mechanical device makes the carousel move back and forth isn't working on this machine, so. But that's basically how it would work. How it would work. Now there was a bulb in this machine, and it worked for oh, about 10 seconds, and then burned out. And as you can see, it's fried. <laughs> but uh, you can still find parts for these machines, including replacement bulbs. So if I really wanted to, I could fix this. But I bought it at a uh, thrift store, uh, paid $2 for it. So I don't know if I want to really make any investment in this. But this is an example of one of the many slide projectors you could buy to uh, watch your slides with back in the day. And for those who wanted to hang out to their slides and look at them in the digital age, now that slide projectors and screens are so passe, uh, there's this little unit. This is a film and slide digital converter, one of many brands that are available. This goes back to around uh, 2008 or so. This is the Viewpoint brand that can convert your 35 millimeter slides and negatives to digital files. 
comes with this little frame right here that pops open. You can then put your slides in, much like this. And then once they're all in, just close up the lid, seal it up so it's all closed up properly. And then on the side, there's a little slot right here. And you just take your frame, push it in, and wait till it covers where the scanning area is inside this little box. Keep going through, you get the next one, and then you get the next one, and it pops right back out. Of course, it all goes into your computer, and there's software provided to allow you to acquire these uh, digital images and then save them as uh, a actual digital file. And here's a screenshot of the actual software itself. Uh, first thing you have to do is set up the scanner, uh, calibrate it. So it's, it's much like a, a Twain type uh, setup for your, for your scanner that you would have on a computer uh, or printer. So now it's just calibrating that. Once you get it all set up, then you can use the slide frame to slide it back and forth on the bottom of the device to see what uh, the slide looks like. And it's going to come in any minute now. There it is. What you do now is you will hit that to take the picture. Then you hit the transfer button to transfer it to a selected folder on your computer, and it creates a JPEG file. And you do that until you uh, run out of pictures on the slide frame. Now you can do a very few things with it. You can flip the image around in case you didn't get it right the first time in the frame itself. And you can do a little bit of that sort of thing. Well, that just about wraps up our look at the world of slide photography. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll catch you next time.